Our universe is vast and still expanding according to almost all major theories. So at the moment it is way too big for humans to traverse from one end to another. The universe is so massive that it takes more than four light years to travel to Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to the Earth. Four light years simply means that even with the best propulsion systems present on our planet, it would take thousands of years for a human to reach there. We all can dream about interstellar and building colonies among the star, but it is not a task that you can do just by waving a magical wand. In fact, we do not even have any magical wand. However, curious minds are working relentlessly to solve this conundrum, and perhaps one day it would be possible to reduce the time required to propagate all over the universe. There are many ideas about how to do that, from laser-accelerated solar sails to nuclear propulsion. But these technologies also have not helped us much, and in one lifetime that we humans get, we would not be able to go too far with these available systems. The galaxies are really open to those who can travel as fast as the speed of light, or faster. Many imaginative physicists have long been pondering the ultimate propulsion system, a bubble in space and time, in which a spaceship could dash from one star to another, or from one galaxy to another, just like it happened in Star Trek. But let's keep fiction aside and come back to reality. Is it possible to travel at or even faster than the speed of light? Why it is almost impossible to break the barrier of light speed? What is a warp bubble? And can it really go faster than light? Let's roll into the video to answer our questions. What is the speed of light? Why it is so hard to go beyond it? According to the general theory of relativity, it is impossible for anybody to travel faster than light, and the rate at which light travels is the cosmic speed limit for all the bodies in the universe, which is 299 792 458 meters per second, or generally known as 3.0 x 10 rays per 8 meters per second. In fact, it is not the speed of light, it is the speed of causality. Now what does that even mean? limit of causality is a bit different than speed of light. When we consider Maxwell's equations and Newtonian laws and Galileo's relativity, which states that all experiments should give the same results regardless of the velocity of the inertial frame of reference, Galileo's relativity was different from Einstein and it worked as an ideal precursor. So now when we ponder on all these fundamental equations of motion, electromagnetism, and relativity, we come to a conclusion that is also known as Lorentz transformation. We find a constant that is finite instead of infinite because for the basic laws of electricity and magnetism to work, we need a finite maximum speed at which two parts of the universe can talk to each other. This maximum speed of causality, which is not infinite, is also the speed of light as photons are the particles that are particles and waves at the same time and travel at the maximum speed of causality. That is the reason C of causality, also known as the speed of light. Why we cannot travel at the speed of light? The reason behind Einstein's statement that nobody can possibly travel faster than the speed of light is that we would also require an infinite amount of energy to reach the maximum speed that the laws of the universe can allow. For example, think of a person who is pretty fit and has only 65 kilograms weight. The mass of this person would get increase and increase if he starts moving faster and faster. At a speed 50% of the speed of light, the person would behave as if his weight is 87 kilograms and at 90% speed of light, the weight would be 172 kilograms. As a result, more and more energy would be required to move this increasing weight. In other words, the amount of energy that we require at this speed is perhaps the same amount of energy a country uses in a day. And we are talking about a big and developed country, not a small developing country where people are less and technology does not require much energy. Photons are massless particles, as we have discussed earlier that they behave like particles and waves at the same time. That is why according to the theory of relativity nobody in the universe can travel faster than light. Let us know in the comment box if you want to see a video on the nature of photons, so they do not require energy to move. Now one question might be popping into your head. If photons require no effort to move, then why do not they move faster than the speed of light, or in other words, at infinite speed? The answer is time dilation. Time slows down as you approach the speed of light, and when you reach it, 
time stops. For a photon, there is no time. Everything happens instantaneously. Trying to make a photon go faster than the speed of light is like bringing your car to a stop and trying to go slower. It can't be done. What is a warp bubble? Eric Lentz and his recent discovery have taken everyone by storm, and now there are debates about whether humans are finally able to travel at the speed of light, or maybe beyond that. The idea of a warp bubble was first introduced by a Mexican theoretical physicist, Miguel Alcubierre, in 1994. At that time, during his doctoral thesis, Alcubierre apparently sparked creativity while mixing his imaginations of Star Trek with the principles of general relativity and identified a loophole. The remarkable theory of Einstein states that we live in four-dimensional space-time. Here space is not static. Like a tablecloth, it gets influenced by the presence of small and massive objects according to their masses respectively. So everything that moves on this stage can accelerate only according to the limits set by this stage, space-time, or tablecloth. For instance, at the time of Big Bang, the original structure of space-time may have expanded for only a split second, and it happens so much faster that no ray of light could travel. Even today, the fast pattern of expansion is the same, and extremely distant galaxies move away faster than the speed of light, which is the reason their light can no longer reach us. Based on this discovery that Alcubierre made, he presumed that it can be a potential step toward a warp bubble. If the space-time curve contracts in front of a spaceship and expands behind it to compensate, it would be possible to travel to the destination perhaps faster than the speed of light. This ship would remain encapsulated in a bubble, and the crew would not be able to sense the magnitude of this interstellar journey. In a 2017 lecture, Alcubierre compared it to being on a passenger conveyor belt at the airport. You can imagine that the floor behind you is being created out of nothing and in front of you, it is being destroyed. So you move along. But even though this idea was possible theoretically, this gave rise to many practical problems according to the theory of relativity. First, to deform space-time so quickly, you might have to cram a huge mass into a bubble bounded by a wall thinner than an atomic nucleus. After that, one might need two forms of matter to maintain the bubble. The gravity of ordinary matter will try to cause this space journey, and it will contract the space at the front of the bubble to move forward. But at the same time, the space present at the back of the bubble will feel the need to expand like rising bread dough. We discussed this same problem in the video when we were explaining the wormholes. The solution to these two problems is also the same. The exotic matter. To make the expansion happen, Alcubierre thought he would need a form of negative energy that would take anti-gravity radiations into the system, but the problem here is we do not have any grasp on the exotic matter in practical terms. So the magnificent idea by Alcubierre remained in theoretical papers up until Eric Lenz. Eric Lenz at the University of Göttingen has suggested a way that might enable humans to transcend the barrier of the Milky Way galaxy, and we might be able to send a spacecraft beyond that. During the pandemic in his first enforced isolation at Göttingen, Lenz found a way to use positive energy to construct a warp bubble that perhaps has blown away the biggest hurdle in the form of exotic matter. In a plunge that Eric Lentz took deep into the underlying equations of general relativity, he found the solution to the problem in deep-lying Einstein's field equations in the geometry of space-time. These equations calculate how a particular amount of energy and matter deforms the space-time curve. The novel idea of Eric Lentz. The main focus of Lentz's work is to somehow minimize the dependence of warp bubbles on negative energy or exotic matter. So. He examined carefully the work of Alcubierre that led to negative energy requirements. After going through analyzing space-time and modeling the multidimensional substances as a stack of very thin layers, he found that the work of Alcubierre revolved around the simple linear relationships between the equations that shift from one layer to the next. Changing these linear relationships to hyperbolic relations, which are way more complex and typically express instantaneously changing quantities, did the job for Eric Lentz. This still requires a massive amount of energy and mass, but the good news is that this new version will require only positive energy, and we are out of the curse of negative energy. I was very surprised that no one had tried this before me, Lentz says. 
The work bubble that Eric has suggested looks different from the works of Alcubierre in 1994. It consists of diamond-shaped regions of altered space-time that resemble a flock of birds. Lentz says that the creation of such a bubble in real life would require an extremely dense fluid of charged particles, exactly like a substance we found in the interior of a neutron star. We cannot make a warped bubble geometry by the layering of rings and disks made of solid material. In a nutshell, to travel at a speed nearly equal to the speed of light is still very, very far away from the available applied technology of humans. However, the good news is that we no longer require the application of exotic matter and negative energy on the basis of inspiring work by Eric Lentz. The theoretical games are within the realms of established physics. Alcubierre himself has termed Lentz's paper as an extremely important development toward the creation of a warp bubble. Francisco Lobo, a researcher at the University of Lisbon and a colleague of Alcubierre, who also has published a textbook on warp drives, admits that there is not any obvious error in this work. He also added that if this work is correct, this really has the potential of opening up a new interest and novel avenues of research in warp drive physics. The work by Eric Lentz suddenly made all of us believe that we have crossed 300 years in the blink of an eye. What will happen next? And when the warp bubble will be available for a journey among stars? We all are very anxiously waiting for that to happen soon. It is the end of our today's episode in space. Please encourage us with a thumbs up press and a subscription to our channel. Also, let us know about your feedback and queries in the comment section.